All right, today we're going to be talking about a concept um, that I really discussed very thoroughly in my book, and it's not out there a whole lot else, um, and that's general versus specific conditioning. And really the idea is that conditioning is not something that you work on for a few weeks before the season. If you're a fighter, it needs to be more than just the, the training camp phase. You really need to look at conditioning as a year-round training process because the ability to maintain your power output and perform over the course of your entire event or your season depends on your conditioning. It's, it's something that needs to be focused on more than just a few weeks. And really, so what I've done is broken down this idea of general versus specific conditioning, and we'll go into what those different phases are and what those different aspects are. But this is just a way to look at conditioning from a yearly train perspective rather than just a short period of time before your season. Um, and so we look at each different phase as having a different purpose and a different primary emphasis on what you're trying to develop. And it's really like putting together the pieces of a building block in the right order. Putting them together in the wrong order or not developing on one sequentially and your conditioning is going to suffer and your performance isn't going to be what it could have been. So we start here. Um, I'm going to use MMA combat sports as kind of the example, but this model really can be applied towards any sport. The principles are the same. So we're going to start out what we'd call the general preparatory phase. Okay, this is really after the competitive season. This is far away from the next competitive season. And here you don't want to replicate the movements of your sport. Okay, you just did your sport for whatever your competitive season was or you just got done fighting or whatever it is. You're not going to use a ton more of your sport as more conditioning. You want to give your body a chance to take a break from all that stress. You want to let any injuries or nagging things heal. And the last thing you'll be doing is going through more heavy work of that sport and, and that's those skills. So we don't replicate the movements in our sport. Uh, we have more centralized focus, so we're developing more of the heart and the cardiovascular ability less than the muscles themselves, and that's part of why we're more general as well. Um, and you can use a wide range of power output. So we're not trying to mimic the work to rest ratio or the power of the sport. We're keeping things much more general. Um, in combat sports, we'd be doing stuff like uh, I de detailed in my Roadwork 2.0 article. So you can use jump rope, you know, just basic stuff, swimming, biking, uh, jogging, you know, shadow boxing. It's just very simple stuff that is not the sport. It's not mimicking the exact movement to the sport. It's not mimicking the work to rest ratio of the sport. And it's the most general out of those phases, okay? How long that phase is going to last is really going to depend on what your competitive season looks like, but you're at least going to spend a month or two, generally speaking, in that phase to develop the foundation for the, the next phases. Okay? Next phase, we'd call this more of a specific preparatory phase. And now, all we're really doing is, is taking those, those movements and changing a little bit so that we're using the same general muscle groups. Okay? We're not replicating the entire movement. We're not uh, you know, using the skills of the sport, but we might be using pieces of those skills or pieces of the range of motion. So you can use some aspects of the movement, and you want to just use the same general dominant energy system. So if you're uh, a, a fighter or some hip dominant or sport that requires hip movements, you know, you'd use the sled hip drill uh, that we presented in the other video, which you can check out, um, and use some sort of movements that use the same muscle groups uh, in some aspect. But you're not copying the entire sport, you're not copying the entire uh, movement of the sport, and you're again, you're just using the same energy systems, you're not using the exact work to rest ratios, okay? This phase, again, will generally last you know, one to two months, depending on your competitive season, and these are going to be the primary emphasis. Next, we move into the pre-competitive phase, and this is really where you're starting to get into the early aspects of a training camp, which is usually, usually a month or two out from the competitive season. Uh, if you're a fight uh, combat athlete, we'd call the pre-competitive phase probably the early stages of your training camp, maybe eight weeks out, ten weeks out, somewhere in that range. And this is where we're starting to use the actual drills of the sport as your primary conditioning means. So something like pad work, bag work, rolling. Okay, you're starting to actually begin to use the skills of the sport as your conditioning uh, means. And maybe not all of your conditioning means. These always are going to overlap to some extent. So you're not just going to cut out everything you're doing here and completely change. You're going to always kind of transition gradually into that period. But you're starting to use more specific work to rest ratios, more specific energy system stuff and you're starting to mimic more of what's going to happen in the sport. So for example, let's say you're doing some pad or bag work as you're conditioning. Uh, here you're going to start to use you know, maybe five to six second bursts with little back off periods of rest and then back again, closer to what you're going to be doing in a fight. It doesn't have to mimic an actual fight. You don't have to do three rounds of five or five five or whatever, but you're going to start to use those more specific movements. Okay? Finally, in the competitive phase, um, this is going to differ depending on your type of sport. So a combat athlete really doesn't have a competition phase, they just have a single event and then a long break. Uh, you know, whereas a you know, football player or a soccer player has a long competitive season where they have to maintain their conditioning throughout it. Um, but this is really where the competition exercises are the primary training means of conditioning and you want to be as specific as possible. So 
really we kind of combine these two phases. This would just transition into right before the fight uh, in combat sports, and this would take place throughout the season in a team sport or some sort of competitive sport with an actual training season. But here, let's say, for example, you're going to use sparring in combat sports right before the fight. You want that to be the way that you primarily train your conditioning, and you want to be as specific as possible. Okay? Three rounds of five, if that's what your fights, is, the fights are going to be, with 60 seconds rest, or five rounds of five if it's a championship fight, or two minutes, whatever your fight's going to be. You want this sparring to be as close to the fight as possible. We even go so far as, and you definitely want to do this, whatever kind of opponent you're going to be facing, if you think your opponent's going to try and take you down the whole fight, that's the kind of stuff you want to be doing in sparring. If you think it's going to be a stand-up fight, that's where you want to be focusing. Not that you won't be doing other aspects of the training, but you want that to be as specific to the fight as possible. Same rest periods, same level of work output, as, same possible, as, the much, as much as possible um, to be specific to the event that you're doing. And throughout the season, uh, if you're, let's say, a football player, you want to be using two-minute offense. You want to be using drills. You want to be doing things that are the actual sport as you're conditioning. I, I don't understand why a lot of times people get in the season their comp and their conditioning becomes completely unrelated to the sport. Okay? You want to be using the competitive drills, the competitive aspects of the sport as closely as possible for your conditioning phase because you're in the middle of competition and that's going to have the highest carryover into the actual performance of the sport. Okay, so again, these aren't the only things you're doing, but these should be the primary emphasis of your conditioning throughout the time of the year. If you neglect this aspect, okay, if you don't do the general work first, number one, you can risk burnout because you've been spending the entire year doing very specific stuff at a high level and that's where you get you know, repetitive use injuries and chronic stuff that starts to build up. Um, and you also, if you don't build the centralized focus, the cardiovascular system, uh, you know, the heart itself, you're not going to have the ability to develop the, the musculature and the overall conditioning in later phases. So it's really important that each of these phases be developed in the right order and that you work your way from the more general phase to the pre-competitive and the competitive phase uh, sequentially, focusing on each area as you go. Okay? So, this is just a very broad overview of the general versus specific conditioning principle. Uh, I talked a lot about this more in my book. If you have that, you can certainly find it there. Or if not, you can grab the book and pick it out. And this is just a much better way of looking at conditioning as a year-round training process rather than just a couple weeks before a fight or an event. So for more videos like this, make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel, just youtube.com slash eight weeks out. You can also find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash Joel Jameson or slash eight weeks out. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Joel Jameson. And we'll see you again next time. Most coaches and athletes really don't understand what conditioning is or how to develop effective training programs to include it. And the truth is that conditioning is often the difference between winning and losing. You know, conditioning seems to be given short shrift and nobody speaks about it with confidence like he does. I created the BioForce Certified Conditioning and Coach course to solve all these problems and more. I've done tons of other certifications. Nobody does this. I've put over 15 years of work and understanding to give coaches a step-by-step -step guide to maximize performance for each and every athlete. I'm taking a lot with me, so I, I couldn't write fast enough. So. It was great. It really fit in well with my schedule. Joel's information is so valuable. With my clients, the results that I got were amazing. I never thought possible. This is the key to winning. This is the key to success. Just beyond my imagination. <laughs>